G'day and welcome to my channel. Well, for something different, this video isn't about gasification. In this video, I'll be installing an off-grid solar system. Although, that's not to say we're going off-grid. We're not going off-grid. All it means is a part of our electricity supply will be off-grid, but not all of it. Uh, we will still be connected to the grid. Yeah, it's just that it really isn't financially viable for us to go off-grid. Um, and about 14 or 15 years ago, we went to quite a lot of trouble and cost to run a cable up to the house here. So I'm not about to ditch that anytime soon. So what we're sort of going for, just to uh, cut our uh, electricity cost, is sort of a, a partial and part-time off-grid system or as I like to call it, a grid minimum system. And it's not that we're huge consumers. We really don't use all that much. Although, we do use more than what is considered average. But that's good reason for that. And one of them is our sewage treatment system, which has this air blower, which runs 24 seven. It never stops. And it uses roughly about 150 watts. That's to keep the membrane filters clean. It scours the surface, basically stopping any crap sticking to them, literally speaking, which is roughly 3.6 kilowatt hours per day. That's not counting in the submersible pump, which pumps out the treated water on our lawns. Oh, lovely stuff. And then there's our pressure pump, which is for our potable water. So every time we turn on a tap or flush a toilet, that's 800 watts. Next to that is our fire pump, but that runs on petrol, so that's all good. This is our current setup. So we've got the grid supply, as well as a backup generator and a changeover switch. So whenever we lose power, which I think happens a little bit too often, we basically flick the changeover switch over to the generator and we're running off grid. So here's the system that I'm going to be installing. So more or less, the solar system here replaces the previous generator. So here the inverter can get its energy from three different sources, solar panels, battery, or auxiliary AC input, which can be either grid supply or generator. And in this case, the generator will be running on wood gas. Anyway, that's a bit of a brief overview of the system and a bit of an explanation why we are looking at installing it. One more thing that's worth mentioning too is um, it's going to be installed on a shed here and that's because the shed is the only sort of uh, substantial piece of roof we have that faces north. Okay, well I guess there's only one thing left to do and that's to unpack the boxes and uh, get cracking. Oh yeah, that's too grabby for aluminium. The roof brackets and the earthing clamps are attached to the first couple of rails. And, uh, the roofing brackets, I've got them roughly where they need to go. They are at 800 centers. So yeah, I think we'll get the first couple of brackets up. Hopefully the rain showers will hold off for a little while. Well that's three of the rails down. The fourth rail is going to end up somewhere out here.
Yeah, so what I'll need to do here is just make up some brackets for here to mount their fourth rail on. So I think I'll just do something out of the galv angle, something like that. So I'm just making up the first bracket. So I've just got a bit of a rail here, just, just to make sure that it all fits and uh, it's coming out at the right angle. So I'm just gonna make this up, mash it all the lengths, and then I can mass produce the rest of the brackets. Everything's getting hot to touch. A bit of a warm day today. All right, that's the first bracket done. So I try to keep these as simple as possible with uh, minimal or no welding. So in this case, it's no welding. So here you can see it's just attached to the roof with a normal roofing screw. At the other end here, it's pretty much the same. Only difference is uh, at this end, um, the roofing screw is a 14 gauge, uh, whereas the other one is a 12 gauge. And we move up here, and the same sort of thing. Uh, it's all bolted together with galvanized M10 uh, nuts and bolts. And uh, here's your, uh, your solar kit. And uh, same thing there, that's just screwed down with a 14 gauge uh, self-drilling and self-tapping screw. So that's pretty much in a nutshell. It's now later in the afternoon and the uh, shade's starting to come over. Yeah, so trees. During winter that will become a bit of a problem, but anyway, we'll deal with that. I'm there right to go and mass produce the rest of the brackets. I should probably also just point out that uh, I am putting uh, rubber washers underneath the roof brackets. Uh, I've got a whole container of them. Um, and I am also keeping the rubber washers that came with the roofing screws on top of the bracket. Uh, same thing goes with these. So that's 12 gauge roofing screw. And these are 14 gauge roofing screws that actually came with the solar kit. Well, that's it. All the brackets are down, all the frames are bolted together. So now I've just got to brace them up. As you can see, they'll flap around in the breeze. So for that, I've got some 30 by 30 by 2.5 uh, angle. Well, that's it. The cross bracing is all complete and it's really stiffening them up. It's uh, solid as. Rightio, so that's the fourth rail down. It's actually turned out quite well, but tell you what, it's been a scorcher of, of a day up here today, so I'm glad that's over. So I've just got to connect the, the earth bonding there, and then we're ready to throw the rest of the panels on. But uh, it just started spitting with rain, and there's a bit of a storm brewing out there, so yeah, it's probably best if I get off the roof. Anyway. At least that's done.
Rightio, well now with the solar panels all installed on the roof, uh, next I've got to build the enclosure for the inverter and the battery. And uh, that's going to be installed at the end of the shed there, just to the left of the uh, fire hose reel. And uh, I'll just be bringing the conduits down from, from the uh, roof there. Uh, the reason why I'm mounting this uh, on the outside of the shed is uh, I don't really trust the lithium ion batteries enough to be installing them inside the shed. Uh, I mean, it's probably okay, but look, uh, I'd rather have it on the outside, uh, just in case. So I'm just trying this out just to see what height is ideal. So the last thing I really want to do is scuff my forehead on the roofing iron. But I think yeah, this is probably about right. Right yeah, well the thing is now ready to get sheeted. And all the wells have been painted with some coal galve paint. The uh, area for ventilation have been uh, fitted with some aviary mesh. And then fitted to the back of the enclosure are these. And uh, these are for screwing it to the shed wall, and that's because um, I'm not aiming for the studs, I'm actually aiming for the noggins. So that just, yeah, I can put a few screws in here, that's what that's for. This is the ply sheet for mounting the inverter and the battery on. So that's just had a coat of paint. Hello, that's the neighbour's calves that I've walked up. You come up for a visit, eh? Right, yeah, so I've just given the father's men one coat of paint, and that's because I really just wanted to get at least one coat of paint under the flashing. So using flashing like this, it's a fantastic way to hide your rough edges. It's uh, so easy and, and so quick. I have to screw this in position and then up the top here I'm just going to be putting in some flashing just like so and uh, yeah it, it really makes the whole thing look so much better it really finishes it off quite well and this is what I'm using for flashing it's just a color bond I think this is a 0.55 mil thick I just went to a hardware store and I just told them the sizes and length that I wanted and then one week later I get all this back Easy. So, before I put the uh, roofing iron on, I've just lined the roof with some fibre cement sheets and that's just to stop the radiant heat coming through the roofing iron 
and the fibre cement sheets, it will cut it down to absolute minimum. Right, that's it. All the flashing is on, including all the roof flashing. It was a little bit tough at drilling into the square tube steel with the roofing screws. Um, they normally screw into much thinner material. I tell you what, they're not going to go anywhere. So all that's left to do now is to make the two doors. Oh, there you go, the doors are on, the thing is now weatherproof. I've just got to buy some more door hardware, like a husp and staple and stuff like that, but that's pretty much it, it's uh, pretty much finished. Look at that. So we're pretty much ready to start mounting the equipment, but uh, I think I'll leave that for the next video. I've still got some bits and pieces still coming. Good stuff.